Okay, alcohols. Alcohols contain the functional group. Alcohols contain the functional group OH. Okay, the term functional group is the part. The term functional group means it's a part of um, the molecule, the organic molecule. The part of the organic molecule that is largely responsible largely responsible for the chemical properties of the molecule okay and it's in a homologous series of a homologous series of alcohols remember what a homologous series me means it's a family of compounds with the same chemical properties the same functional group but each member differs by CH2 okay now if we take the alcohols right, so the simplest alcohol in the, in the homologous series is if you have one carbon and it has an O and a an H remember these lines these lines are covalent bonds okay, these lines are covalent bonds and what we've drawn here to draw on the displayed formula because every bond is shown it's called a displayed formula right so this is one carbon remember carbon has to have four bonds and this is this is called methane because there's one carbon but you take off the e take off the e and this is called the alcohol is called ol so it's called methanol okay so the next member is two carbons and that is called ethane take off the e ethanol ethanol like that okay right so let's have a go at naming some so naming some alcohols so it gets it can get a bit tricky with naming alcohols but let's try uh, let's try this one be careful with your connectivity the bond is going to the O okay and then there's H H H is all around okay so in the main chain there are four carbons okay so that is called butane we take off the A butan okay and there's an alcohol but you have to show which carbon it is on so it's one, give it the lowest number, carbon two, butan two, ol. Okay, so this one here, okay, so I'm not gonna bother drawing all the hydrogens on. Okay, there's hydrogens all the way around, but that would be called butan one, ol. Okay, let's give some more examples. Um, if you had... Uh, five carbons, okay, and you had an O, make sure it's at the end, OH, and you had an uh, OH like that, okay, and there's hydrogens on all the other carbons, so that would be called main chain is five carbons so that would be pentan um, and the uh, the OHs are on carbon give them the lowest possible number one two three pentan uh, two three comma between the numbers and because there's two of them they go di because there's two ol Okay, pentan two three di ol. Let's go for another example. Let's go for another example. So if we had like that, okay. If we had uh, a um, alcohol there, okay, and uh, 
maybe an alcohol there, right? And if we had a methyl group there as well, okay, so these are all the, the side chains all coming off. Okay, so the main chain, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the main chain is hexan, giving it the lowest number, one, two, three. We have got a hexan, two, three, diol, because there's two, so there's two alcohols. We've also got a methyl group on carbon three. So it'll be three at the front, methyl, hexan, two, three, diol. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So, but ideally, actually, ideally, because, <laughs> can I just go back here? Because you have got a, um, so this is a bit confusing, because you've got an N and a D, which are both consonants, we do keep the E in there. Um, because you've got an N and a D, which are both consonants, we keep the vowel, we keep the vowel in there. So it'd be three methyl, hexane, two, three diol, uh, pentane, two, three di pentane, two, three diol. Okay, let's do one more. If you do skeletal formula, okay, so if we do, uh, like that and we go like methyl group for example if we do this one now skeletal formula you don't show the H attached to carbon you don't show the H attached to carbon but you show the H attached to everything else but you show the H attached to oxygen or nitrogen okay don't show it attached to carbon but you show it so you've got to show that h there on the skeletal formula okay so this is a skeletal skeletal formula right so let's see main chain main chain one two three four five six okay so that's hex hex and and then we have got um, on carbon three, so it's one, two, three. So it's hexan three ol, hexan three ol. Uh, and then we have got on carbon four, we've got a methyl, so it's four methyl hexan three ol. Okay. So that's how you name them. Now we've got to do classification, all right? So the classification of alcohols. Okay, classification of alcohols. Classification of alcohols. Okay, so if you have a, um, you have an alcohol like this, Okay, with all the hydrogens, carbon has to have four bonds. Okay, this is called, uh, this, this is, the main chain is three carbons, so that's propan, and the alcohol is on carbon one, so it's called propan one ol, right? Now this is called a primary alcohol. And that is because the carbon that is joined to the OH is only joined to one other carbon. Okay, so the carbon that is joined to the OH is only joined to one other carbon. Joined to one other carbon. Let's try another one. Let's try a, uh, let's try this one. careful with your connectivity to your O here. Okay, what's that called? That's called propan and uh, it's on carbon 2, so it's propan 2 O. Okay, now the carbon that is joined to the alcohol 
is join is joined to two other carbons so that is called a secondary alcohol and there's a h there as well okay so finally there's one more alcohol so let's try this one type type of alcohol okay so let's have a go at naming this one so it's propan is the longest chain the main chain propan the alcohol is on carbon 2, propan 2 ol, um, and on carbon 2 there's a methyl, so it's 2 methyl propan 2 ol. Right? And this, the OH, the carbon that the OH is joined to, is joined to three other carbons, yeah? And so that is called a tertiary. A tertiary alcohol. Sometimes, sometimes a shorthand that I personally use is I call primary, I go like that, and I go secondary like that, and I go tertiary like that. But that's just a shorthand that I I use. Okay, so I'm just going to give you one quick example, and you're going to say whether it is a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol. Yeah. So this one here. What's that one? Okay, that's a secondary alcohol because the carbon is joined to two other carbons. There's one, one H there. That's a secondary alcohol. All right, let's try another one. Mm. Okay, this alcohol here this alcohol, the carbon that the OH is joined to is joined to three other carbons and that is a tertiary alcohol. Okay, right, what else do we need to know about alcohol? So that's how you name them, that's how you classify them. Right, we need to know the uh, physical properties. Right, the physical properties. If you compare, so physical properties, Right, if you compare with an alkane of a similar size, right? So if you compare um, ethane, with, and when I say similar size, I mean the similar number of carbon atoms, sorry. Ethane with ethanol, same number of carbon atoms with ethanol. Okay, what's the difference in the physical properties? Well, ethane is a gas, ethanol is a liquid. Alcohols have got higher boiling points than uh, alkanes. Higher boiling points than alkanes. Why do they have higher boiling points? And that is because when you're boiling something, if you take ethane and you take another ethane molecule, Okay, if you take ethane and another ethane molecule and you're boiling it, you are breaking the intermolecular forces. What's the intermolecular forces between uh, ethane molecules? It is the induced dipole to dipole forces, which are called uh, London forces. And these are the weak intermolecular forces. They're weak. Not much energy is needed to break. So it has a lower uh, boiling point. Weak forces, not much energy needed to break. Not much energy needed to break. Okay, but if you want to boil, if you want to break the forces in ethanol, what's the intermolecular forces in ethanol? So if we draw an ethanol and an alcohol molecule, and we draw it out really clearly, right, you know that oxygen is an electronegative atom. So oxygen is slightly negative, hydrogen is slightly positive. This bond is a polar bond because oxygen is electronegative. 
Remember that there are two lone pairs on uh, oxygen as well, just like in water. And if you take another alcohol molecule, another ethanol molecule, okay, so two lone pairs, um, slightly negative oxygen, slightly positive hydrogen, there is a hydrogen bond from the lone pair on the oxygen to the hydrogen of the neighboring molecule. That's a hydrogen bond, which is the strongest intermolecular force. And so a lot of energy, strongest intermolecular force, a lot of energy is needed to break. So it has a higher boiling point than alkanes, yeah? Another physical property is the um, uh, solubility in water. These are called physical properties, right? Are alcohols soluble in water? Okay, so solubility in water. Okay, so first, are alkanes soluble in water? Right, so um, if you take an alkane, again, let's just take ethane. Is ethane soluble in water? Soluble in water? No. Because it is a non-polar molecule, there aren't any electronegative oxygen atoms. It, it cannot form um, hydrogen bonds with water. Whereas if you take ethanol, an alcohol, is ethanol soluble in water? Yes, because it can form hydrogen bonds with the water. So if you take a water molecule, two lone pairs, slightly negative, slightly positive, it can form from the lone pair, from the lone pair, it can form a hydrogen bond with the water molecules. So yes, it is soluble in water, okay? But it is only the small alcohols that are soluble in water. Small alcohols are more soluble in water because um, uh, this is this part here is soluble in water. If you took this alcohol, for example, okay, took that alcohol, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's got eleven carbons, um, so it's a really long molecule uh, with uh, with alcohol. This would not be very soluble because it's just this part here that's soluble. This part here is uh, not soluble, insoluble. And so solubility decreases as the chain length increases. Okay, last thing I want to mention is methanol. Methanol is a really key chemical. Uh, methanol, the structural formula of methanol is that. Uh, it is used as a fuel, as it burns very well. It's used as a feedstock, a chemical feedstock. Chemical feedstock means that this feed, the word term feedstock means that it's the starting material on an, on an industrial scale the starting material for many other chemicals. So industrially, it's used as a starter material for many other chemicals, like polymers, um, various other things. 